In today's Q&A video, I'm gonna be answering more of your great questions that you've asked on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. The comments section of our YouTube videos is probably my favorite part about this entire platform because it allows all of you to ask questions about the content we're filming and for me to personally answer those questions. Although I'm not able to get back to all the questions that you guys answer, I certainly try to answer as many as I can. And in these Q&A videos, I'm able to take five questions and answer them in greater depth. Our first question today is from our video on how to remove shoe polish from leather shoes featuring the Saphir Reno mat. Uh, it's from a, a Carol Craig Hoffman and it reads, Kirby, is this appropriate to use on a lighter tan slash brown colored leather? I have a pair of Paul Green booties that I love, but the wax polish has left it dull and caked looking. I'm afraid of either stripping the color or leaving mark stains in the light leather. Thank you for your easy to follow instructional videos. Thanks, Carol. And I especially love seeing women follow our videos because of course, all of the shoeshine tutorial and principles that we promote here on Kirby Allison, of course, are just as applicable to fine women's shoes that are made from a high quality leather. So Carol, about your question. So uh, the short answer is yes and no. Right, so yes, absolutely, the Saphir Reno mat is exceptional and really designed to do exactly what you're intending, which is to remove that caked up buildup that accumulates on top of leather uh, over the course of several uh, shinings, uh, you know, over longer periods of time. I really describe the Reno mat uh, almost as like Drano. It's not something that you're gonna use frequently, but it is something that every once in a while is really good to really pull everything that's been placed on top of that leather off. Now that said, the, Leno, the Reno mat is quite strong and depending on the quality of the leather and how that leather has been tanned, it is possible to pull some of that finish off of the shoe. So what I always recommend for anyone that's using the Reno mat uh, is always to first test the Reno mat on a small hidden area of the shoe so that if it does affect the actual finish, it doesn't ruin the shoes. Provided that it withstands that small little test, uh, then the Reno mat would be safe to use. My only advice would be to not go crazy because if you use it you know, for long enough and hard enough, it can still even pull the dyes off of a really high quality, well tanned leather. Now, if the Reno mat is too strong, there is another product that we sell that is perfect for cleaning shoes. Uh, that would be our leather cleaning soap, uh, another product that's less strong than the Reno mat. It's not gonna be as effective at pulling off you know, any types of resins or anything else on the leather, but is still really quite effective at cleaning shoes. And then another option is to take a hair dryer uh, to heat up those waxes and then pull them off with the rag. Basically, you're gonna soften or even melt those waxes using the heat, and that allows them to be pulled off much more easily. So if you uh, were worried about the Reno mat or if the Reno mat didn't work, you could try the hair dryer to pull off as much of that wax as possible, uh, and then you could use something like the leather cleaning soap or even use uh, a lower amount of the Saphir Reno mat. Great question, and good luck on those boots. Our second question is from Randy Allen, and it is on uh, one of our shoe care Q&As. So Randy's question reads, uh, Hi Kirby, I have a question for you. Which of your Saphir products uh, do you recommend for Red Wing Iron Rangers? They have an oiled finish uh, harness leather, and I would like a bit of shine on the toe and heels. The dealer likes to use boot oil, which darkens the boot a bit. Thanks. So what Randy is describing here uh, would be called a workwear boot. Uh, and that's really a little bit different than what your classic dress boot is. So this is a pair of Carmina Chelsea boots, beautiful boot, uh, but it's really made like a dress shoe. It's made from a, a vegetable tanned leather. It has a high shine on the toe. Uh, and you can see that this is a beautiful boot. Well, that's not a red wing boot. And really oiled leather boots are different than a classical dress boot uh, in that the leather is oiled and not meant to carry a high shine. So I would actually not recommend using any traditional shoe polishes for an oiled leather boot uh, because you don't want to change the, t uh, the characteristic uh, and that oiled texture of an oiled boot. Uh, Horween uh, Chrome XL uh, is a very popular uh, type of oiled leather uh, that Horween makes. Uh, and again, for something like the Chrome XL, you wouldn't want to use traditional polishes because you'll alter the texture of that oiled leather. 
Now don't worry, Saphir puts out a product specifically for oiled leathers, uh, and it's their oiled leather cream. It's offered in a Medau d'Or quality, which of course is their highest quality, uh, and a standard uh, quality range. Now this is a great product for oiled leather uh, because its basis is with neat foot oil. So it's going to help replenish those oils that the, that leather is stuffed with during the tanning process while still adding a light uh, emulsion of waxes on top of that. But it's not going to produce a high gloss shine because oiled leather really isn't designed to take a high gloss shine. But this will certainly help you take care of your boots. Now as far as the darkening is concerned, it's really difficult to avoid darkening on most leathers uh, whenever you're nourishing and hydrating that leather uh, because anytime you add anything into that leather that the leather absorbs, it's always going to darken a bit. But using a high quality product, the leather should rebound back to its natural color in a few days. Our next question today is on our How to Polish Shoes Leather Shoe Shine tutorial video. Just one of our many great tutorial videos on how to polish leather dress shoes. It's from a Kevin Buran and it reads, can you use these creams for leather jackets? The short answer is that no, you really shouldn't use any cream polishes intended for shoes on leather jackets because of the higher concentration of waxes, they can rub off. Uh, it's a different uh, formulation of waxes. So again, uh, it's not going to really be appropriate for leather jackets and could completely change the texture uh, of a leather jacket. Now, Saphir does have a product specifically for leather jackets called the Canadian. Uh, and the best way to think about this is like shoe polish, but for leather jackets. Uh, it's still going to nourish and condition that leather. Uh, it has a beeswax, so it's going to help elevate the shine a little bit, not too much. It's a hard wax, so you don't have to worry about it rubbing off. And what's great about this is just like your standard Saphir Pomadeur Cream Polish, it's available in various different colors. This is a light brown. So if you need to add a little bit of pigment, a little bit of recoloration to better, to better saturate or resaturate the finish of that jacket, this is an absolutely exceptional product. Now, if you need more permanent recoloring, there's another product from Saphir called the Saphir Juvicure that you can use in conjunction with the Canadian. So the Juvicure would be more permanent uh, and more total recoloring. Uh, that is, again, a cream polish that can be spread kind of with your hands. Uh, and then you would apply the Canadian uh, cream polish on top of that to help seal it off. But just for general maintenance, the Canadian is a great polish. It's available in different pigmented colors and also in a neutral if you're just looking for that nourishment. Our next question is on another Q&A video. And this question is from BCP Investigations, LLC. Sounds very mysterious. Uh, and it reads, how do you remove water stains from Cole Haan loafers? I accidentally stepped on a puddle of water as I exited my vehicle. Thank you. Ah, boy, the good old water stain uh, predicament. Uh, the challenge with water stains is that they can be difficult to remove. Uh, if you ever do get your shoe wet, you're almost better off getting the whole shoe wet uh, and then, uh, you know, patting it dry as quickly as possible. It's allowing that water to sit on the shoe um, you know, for longer than you need to, uh, that really can cause those water stains to form. And then it's also caused by dirty water, right? So uh, ideally, if you get your shoes wet with, you know, totally clean distilled water, it wouldn't uh, form any water stains, but it's the dirty water that can do that. But it's always better to get your shoes totally wet um, because it's gonna be less likely to leave a water stain. Now that said, if a water stain does happen, uh, we do have a product called the Saphir Herve Winter. Uh, this is really for salt stains and water stains. Uh, it's very easy to use. You know, shake the bottle, uh, wipe it on the spot that's affected, allow it to dry, and then brush off. You may have to do a few applications of this. It's not gonna help totally remove the water stain. There's no way to take the leather back, uh, back to what it was like prior to that happening but it certainly can reduce the appearance of water stains. The other thing that would re I'd recommend is if you have any type of water staining is to just use a darker colored polish uh, and maybe antique that particular area of the shoe a little bit. We've got a ton of videos on the channel on how to do that. And it's really effective at helping to conceal uh, any type of uh, water stains are blemishing because it just blends it. So those are two strategies you can do. Uh, good luck. Sorry to hear about that. I know what it's like to damage a really nice and special pair of shoes. I hate it. So hopefully uh, this does the trick for you. Okay, our last question today is on our $50 eBay challenge, one of our most popular videos. If you haven't watched this, I encourage you to take a moment and do so. In this particular uh, video, the eBay Challenge 2, 
Uh, we actually uh, took it a step further and we sent the shoes uh, through our shoe restoration program and totally resold them. And that's really where this question comes from. It's from Anders Estes uh, Jacobson and it reads, to me, blind stitched shoes seem much less durable. What do you think? So great question. Let's move these products aside and let's go through a little bit of a tutorial about the difference between blind stitching and open channel stitching. So I've got a few shoes here to show you. First, I have a pair of good old Allen Edmonds. This is an American workhorse, uh, easily probably the most uh, prolific shoe in all of America as far as uh, high quality leather dress shoes are concerned. Uh, made in America or mostly made in America. Uh, and Allen Edmonds for less than $400, you really can get a, a, a nice shoe. Uh, and now it's not the nicest shoe that's out there, but really bang for your buck, it's hard to beat an Allen Edmonds, especially whenever they're on sale. And the great thing about a pair of Allen Edmonds is that it's Goodyear welted, so you can resole the shoe. So with a little bit of polish, you can make these uppers look great. It's gonna mold the foot, only become more comfortable the more you wear this. Uh, but after a lot of wear, you always wear through the outsole. Now here, you can see that the outsole is attached to the welt through this stitching and it's done with what's called an open channel stitching. Now, uh, this is the easiest way to do that. Uh, you just cut the channel, you stitch the outsole to the welt, and bang, you're done. Uh, this is uh, probably what I would call kind of the marketplace standard. It's not particularly fancy, uh, but it certainly gets the job done. Now, the next step up is something that's called invisible channel stitching. Now with the pair of Carmina shoes, I'm a huge fan of Carmina for a hundred extra bucks. You can go from that to this huge difference. Uh, and one of the things you get with a pair of Carminas uh, and really any high quality pair of shoes is what's called an invisible channel stitching. Here you can see that you can't see that outsole stitching. It's still there, but the way that it's done, I'll show you, is through an invisible channel stitch. Now what is done is you still have that stitching, but before that stitching is done, uh, the manufacturer will cut into the outsole and peel this back before stitching the outsole to the welt. And then what happens is during the finishing process, they glue this back down uh, and uh, polish the outsole up and make it look beautiful. And what you end up is with this. Now, between these two shoes, there's no question that an invisible channel stitch aesthetically is just more beautiful. There's nothing more I love than a nice, clean leather outsole. You can't see any of the stitching. Uh, and this, to me, is one of those hallmarks of a really well-made, uh, high-end leather dress shoe. To me, it would be totally unacceptable to spend more than $800 on a pair of shoes and not get this invisible channel stitching. Now, the question that Anders asked is uh, really uh, regarding durability. And so um, the question is, is actually, if done properly, an invisible channel stitch is more durable in a few ways. So first and foremost, what's nice about an invisible channel stitch is that this seam is sealed. So it's one less place that water is going to easily enter in the outsole of the shoe. Now, if you have a low quality leather outsole uh, that is fast tanned in a drum, that's not like an oak bark tanned leather outsole, uh, that's really important because the more water you get into the outsole, the more that any of those um, you know, things that they stuff the leather with are gonna wash out the softer the leather outsole is gonna become, the less abrasion resistant it is, and the faster it wears. That's one of the reasons I always recommend investing as much as possible on a high quality leather outsole, especially like the J.R. Mindenbach oak bark tanned leather outsoles that we use exclusively in our Kirby Allison certified shoe restoration program. One, because it's less affected by water, and two, because of that, or certainly in part uh, due to that, uh, for many other reasons, has a higher resistance to abrasion, so you're not gonna wear through it as quickly. So that, I think, helps uh, seal the shoe, protect it. Now that said, uh, as you can see right here, you know, this little strap right here, this little, you know, flap or whatever you would call it, uh, is quite thin and is glued back down. And I think what you're referring to is that sometimes you can see this piece of leather uh, being worn through and thereby revealing uh, this uh, leather or outsole stitching. You know, that really more is an aesthetic problem more than anything else than one that is actually compromising the integrity of the sole itself. 
Uh, there's two things you can do if that happens. One, just cut it off a little bit. All it's gonna do is just reveal a little bit of that stitching. Or two, uh, if the leather is in relatively good condition, uh, you could just uh, take a little bit of leather glue and glue that back down. But really, uh, to be totally honest, it's not something that I would worry that much about. Now let me see one thing. So I was able to go in my credenza. I keep some older shoes of mine in there. And I've actually got what I think is a great example of what you're describing. So this is an old pair of Alfred Sargent's. I mean, these shoes, gosh, have to be almost eight years old. I've never replaced the leather outsoles on these shoes, and they've gotten tremendous wear. Now, uh, Alfred Sargent, great shoe company uh, out of England. They do all their work in Northampton, makes their leather dress shoes with an invisible channel stitch. And what you can see is right here, this little area of leather, I wore through that and is exposing a little bit of that welt stitching. So you can see right here, what I did was basically just tear that off. And then after you kind of wear it a little bit, it smooths out. So no big deal, right? And um, certainly still looks better than an open channel stitching. And it doesn't affect the durability at all. Now the other thing that can happen is right here where they cut into a little bit. You can see where that's kind of starting to lift up, okay? And so this is simply the product of the fact that I've been wearing these shoes for eight years. A little bit of water has probably gotten in there. It's probably, uh, you know, washed away a little bit of that leather glue. And so this is just kind of coming open. Now, this doesn't really bother me too much. It bothers me a little bit, uh, but it's no big deal. So what you could do here is one, uh, either send the shoes in to be resold, and to be totally honest, these shoes um, probably are at the point that they need to be resold. Or if you really wanted to stretch it out a little bit more, which I don't totally recommend, you could just throw some leather glue in there. You could take it to a cobbler. They could do this for 10 bucks. But put some leather glue in there and then just press this down flat. Now the best thing to do is maybe soak in a little bit of water just to soften the leather but basically then just glue this back down flat, right? You can even see a little bit of the welt stitching uh, in the toe because the toes normally, depending on how you walk, wear a little bit faster than the rest of the outsole. Uh, but as you can see, it's not really affecting the durability at all. And whenever you compare it to this, what you end up with at the end of that is just a little bit of exposed uh, welt stitching, uh, which is the same thing you get out of the box with a new pair of shoes with an open channel. So. My personal opinion is that if you're really going to spend the money and you have a really high quality pair of shoes, uh, that invisible channel stitching that you get on a really beautiful pair of shoes uh, is just one of those hallmarks of quality. One of the things I like about our certified shoe restoration program is that with like a pair of Allen Edmonds, you can really significantly improve the quality uh, and the finish of the shoe by one, putting a GR Rindenbach oak bark tanned leather outsole and heel block on that and then two, finishing it with an invisible channel stitch. Now, after you've received your shoes back from our certified shoe restoration program, not only have you resold them, but you've honestly significantly increased the quality of that shoe. Great questions here today. Uh, again, I love these Q&As. They're easy for us to film. I have fun doing them. Uh, and it gives me an opportunity to really just uh, reiterate my appreciation of everyone's engagement on this channel. Uh, if you have questions, you can also hit me up on Instagram, at Kirby Allison. It's a little bit easier to break through the static there. Uh, a lot of people, um, you know, go back and forth with me and I answer as many of their questions as I can. And of course, please go visit hangerproject.com. Take a look at our website largest selection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world. Uh, shoelaces, shoe polish, hangers, garment brushes, garment bags, everything you need to keep your wardrobe looking great is available at hangerproject.com. And of course, make sure you give this video the thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, let us know what you think. Ask any questions below. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining me today, uh, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. In today's video, I'm wearing a custom slack jacket by Alan Flesser, and this is a beautiful jacket, perfect for a casual Monday like today, uh, super comfortable to wear. I'm wearing it with a blue stripe bespoke Charvet shirt and one of our Kirby Allison Sovereign Grade rep ties. This, of course, is our old birdie knot. I love our Sovereign Grade ties. We've spent a lot of work on the interlining of these ties to really ensure that they tie just an effortless, beautiful knot 
with a perfect dimple. The lining is so important to allowing a knot to be tied properly and to look beautiful. I'm also wearing a pair of custom trousers by Joe Hemmerjani at mytailor.com. This is a beautiful brown Donegal and is a part of our series on odd trousers uh, for the winter and the fall. I'm wearing a pair of our brown sovereign grade small dot melange dress socks, uh, easily my favorite dress sock in the entire world. You have to forgive me, you probably see this sock uh, uh, too many times, too often. It's so easy to accessorize and wear uh, with uh, really my entire wardrobe. So I've got it in every color. Uh, and then a very special pair of shoes. This is my first pair of bespoke Dominic Casey uh, dress shoes. Again, we've got a ton of content uh, with bespoke shoemaker Dominic Casey on this channel. Uh, gosh, he's so interesting. He's such a character. Uh, he's so entertaining. Make sure you check out these videos. This is a beautiful brown suede semi-brogue uh, and just goes perfectly with what I'm wearing today.